on the previous episode, we were joined by Shine Cook to discover the best kept beauty secrets of the world's skincare heaven, Korea. And of course, we continued eating all opportunities. Join us again this episode as we explore more from the store. Welcome back! We're still here enjoying our stay in Korea now on day 6. Before going forth our journey today, we had a tour around Celeste. We learned that it's designed by a famous Italian designer, Piero Lissoni. And we really can tell it from the combination of Italian and Korean style surfacing in the interior. It focuses on minimalism, new trend in Korea living style. Join us today as Mika kickstarted the day with a hair makeover from one of the most exclusive and well known hair salons in Korea. She had to experience K-beauty trend in her hair herself and tell us what it's like. It was super <laughs> relaxing and look at how much her hair transformed. Her hair feels so light but of course there's no denying that it also made her wallet extra lighter than usual. Goodbye Cash! With her hair in check, we now started our journey to some of the best tourist spots around Seoul. First off, the Nandaemun and Songyaemun Gate. It is an important landmark during the Joseon Dynasty. It is one of the eight gates in the fortress wall of Seoul which protected the city from foreign invaders. It was also hailed as the first national treasure of South Korea. It was first built in the last year of King Hejo of Joseon's reign in 1398 and was rebuilt in 1447. That makes it 621 years old. We had a side trip at Myeongdong to dig in some street food on our way to our next destination. Next up, the Nansam Tower. We're up for a challenge at Namsan Tower. We're ready to get high, literally, and climb the 2km trail up to the base of N Seoul Tower. We haven't even reached the half point, but all we feel is tired and breathless. But having a peek of what could be seen at the peak kept us going. <laughs> there were a lot of points when the team almost gave up. We would take a quick break and go for it again. <laughs> they so healthy. Uh, I am now refreshed and I can go too. <laughs> the top. We saw a lot of love locks hanging from the fence of the deck. It's an iconic symbol of Namsan Tower. It symbolizes unbreakable love and friendship, keeping it locked and always at the top. As we strode to our next stop, we went past the Seoul City Hall. We were amazed by its architecture. And for our last stop, we strolled around Kwan Kamun Plaza. 
We walked around and saw so many landmarks along the way. Guanghuamun Plaza is a public open space in Seoul. It is also historically significant as the location of royal administrative buildings known as Street of Six Ministries and features statues of historical people. The goal of opening and reconstruction of this plaza is making turning it into a historical and cultural place for citizens. We also went under the Chongkyechon Bridge and walk along the 11-kilometer-long modern stream. It's the best urban restoration of Korea to date. To cap off day 6, we dined in at Kitchen Lab, where we had steak, pasta, salad, and spicy salad. We even enjoyed a glass of sparkling lemonade. Cheers! Now it's time to head back to Shilste and call it a night. See you tomorrow. It's a new day to explore Korea. And another day means another breakfast buffet. Adventure ahead. You know, your Korea getaway won't be complete without swinging by the famous Yoido Han River Park. It's a beautiful life. Han River is the major river coursing through the heart of Seoul and it's considered as the soul of Seoul. We chilled at the Hanggang Park that was built by the government's launch of Hanggang River Development Project. The main goal of the project was to create an environment-friendly space that the citizens of Korea foreigners and tourists can enjoy. That's why it's really a must to get your feet strolled by the Han River. You won't want to miss the most iconic Korean trend to do this. Eating instant ramyeon from convenience stores, like what we did. What? <laughs> you may opt to try other leisure activities like biking, picnic, dynamic water sports, fishing, and cruising. You can even just dance freely like us. <laughs> or just enjoy the view with the company of your favorite people. For our next stop, we landed at Gyeongbokgung Palace donning our beautiful traditional Korean dress, Hanbok. Gyeongbokgung Palace or Gyeongbok Palace was the main royal palace of the Joseon dynasty. Built in 1395, it is located in northern Seoul, South Korea. The largest of the five grand palaces built by Joseon dynasty. Gyeongbokgung served as the home of kings of the Joseon dynasty, the king's households as well as the government of Joseon. We toured around historical places that are evidently well preserved despite the advent modernization of Seoul. These historical sites are surrounded by buildings and big companies representing the architectural balance of modern and traditional. And now we're off to the concrete jungle of Korea. 
And because we want to cover as much places as we ought to, we're going to rove around via Seoul City tour bus. We sat on top of the deck. The windy weather definitely added to the tourista mood. We dropped off at Hwangjang Traditional Market to fuel up our stomachs with the most famous Korean street food. Dong Market, previously Dongdaemun Market, is a traditional street market in Songnogu, Seoul. The market is one of the oldest and largest traditional markets in South Korea with more than 5,000 shops. There's a lot of spots there where foreign personalities came. There's one of the most famous filmmakers, Tim Burton, Brie Larson, Five Seconds of Summer members, and many more. And it's just so satisfying to get to eat there ourselves because of that. It's not a doubt that Korean food and tradition is really hyping people across the world. We passed by Dongdaemun Design Plaza on our way back and enjoyed a good amount of strolls. We heard that this place looks more vibrant at night, so that's one free tip for you. It was actually a baseball park, but it was rehabilitated to a design plaza because many Korean fashion retail companies are located in Dongdaemun. And Korea wanted to have one place to squeeze them all in. Tourists, and especially fellow Pinoys, should visit Dongdaemun Design Plaza to get the first look on the latest Korean trend in fashion and design. We're always craving for more things to squeeze in our tour. And it's only proper to end our jam-packed day with one of Pinoy's most favorite Korean food, Samgyeopsal. And to satisfy these cravings, we went to Elmark Sungsu. Yeah! We are here for dinner! We're gonna go for Samgyeopsal! Ah! Let's go! This is something that you have to try here in Korea because this is premium Samgyeopsal. Samgyeopsal is... 돼지고기가 음, 국내 이렇게 서민들이 즐겨 찾을 수 있는 대표적인 식품이 된건 저희 연탄 난방 연료가 어, 서민들한테 보급되면서 이제 직화 구이가 손님들한테 보급되면서 이제 쉽게 삼겹살을 접할 수 있게 서민 음식 늘 우리랑 같이 있던 분위기를 낼수 있게 해서 기존에 있던 인쇄소에서 저희가 리모델링을 진행해서 네, 기존에 있던 예전 기억을 느끼시면서 드실 수 있게 저희가 인테리어를 꾸며봤습니다. 네, 저희는 재단을 할때 삼겹살 같은 경우 또는 목살 3.5cm에서 3.8cm 그 사이 두께로 손님이 드셨을 때 입안에 충분히 머금으실 수 있게 어, 고기를 재단해서 어, 육즙, 풍부한 육즙과 그 다음에 음, 고기, 돼지고기의 풍미를 충분히 느끼실 수 있도록 재단하고 있습니다. 저희는 영하 2도에서 3도 사이에서 좋은 숙성을 7일에서 10일 정도 가량 음, 유지하고 있고요. If you want to taste the authentic flavor of samgyeopsal, it's a must to visit these kinds of Korean restaurants because it's a fact that samgyeopsal in its home country is so much different from what we're used to. And for this episode's trivia, did you know that this building used to be a printing factory? and it was slightly rehabilitated into a restaurant, giving it an industrial interior look. This one right here is one of the Korean trends that fit the Philippines well. That's it for our day 7. We have a pile of good news again to share tomorrow.